Hi, this is Thomas. And this is Martina. In today's episode, we are doing something different. Instead of featuring collectors and their collections or the collectibles, we are going to feature the creator of the collectibles. Yes, indeed. And today we are visiting a doll artist who transforms a very popular big eye dog into art toy of her own. Her custom-made art toys have gained a cult following and has since become very collectible as they are all one of a kind. We are talking about Janice Young of Umami Baby. Hi, I'm Janice and I create art dolls. So thank you Janice for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, so could you share with us how did Umami Baby come about? Once upon a time I was working in corporate land. Mm -hmm. um, I was a writer and an editor at the time. And then I got married and we decided that um, if we had kids, one of us would have to stay home and mm. parent. Mm. Um, and so obviously that was me. Mm. So after I, I became a full-time mom, I wanted to find something that I could do mm -hmm. um, from home. And of course I could still write mm -hmm. and I could still do editing work from home, but I wanted to do something artistic and mm. uh, creative. Mm. So um, I started this other shop actually. Um, it was called Big Big and Roro. Okay. Uh, and I was doing a lot of sewing at that time for that. Then I just noticed these dolls, you know, and I had this idea that I wanted to try uh, customizing them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just started doing that. And then because I sort of enjoyed that so much more than sewing, <laughs> um, so I just sort of switched over to that. And, and then that's how Umami Baby sort of just yeah. evolved. I yeah. see. Okay. How long was it actually? How long was it? The Umami Baby thing? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. how old is it now? Yeah. Um, nine, ten years, I guess. So Janice, what's the source of your inspiration? Oh, I, I think I, I get a lot of inspiration from everyday mm. things. Mm -hmm. um, my background is in literature, okay. right? So I actually, uh, one of my majors in university was Victorian literature. Oh, okay. you know, I was actually okay. studying to be a professor at the time. Uh -huh. So I think um, everything from then onwards is sort of influenced by that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you'll see in my work that it always has a sort of antique kind of quality yeah, to Victorian it. Victorian. Yeah, ideas. so it's, I'm, I'm very inspired by mm -hmm. um, the things I've read, mm -hmm. you know, in my background. And then, but then, yeah, also everything that's in the world around us. Mm -hmm. Janice, I understand that everything that you do is self-taught. Yeah, that's right. And uh, take us through your creative process, how you create the doll. Essentially, you take the doll. Mm -hmm. um, Blythe can be completely dismantled. Open her up mm. and dismantle her. There's a mechanism inside her. You also take that out. Um, and then um, I will carve her. And carving her is something like carving wood, or I use woodworking tools. Mm, okay. um, uh, when you finish carving, um, sand it. Any sculpting, she might add things with with uh, clay, and then the coloring, putting mm. on paint and all that. Paint the eye chips. If you carved an open mouth, you would put in teeth. Paint on the back plate. The, the back of her, traditionally, you would put some art on the back as mm -hmm. well. Her eyelids, you would also put art on her eyelids. When she closes them, you can see art mm -hmm. there. Then put on her clothes, you start taking photos. Okay. Yeah. So you actually work on that 11-inch uh, Blythe doll. That's a size that, you know, yeah, most yeah. of the dolls. Yeah, like yeah. Exactly overhead. like that, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's a very long process. Could you tell us maybe how long would it take to make like one doll? Kind of depends on the weather and mm -hmm. also my personal schedule. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to work on her, say, mm -hmm. morning to late afternoon, non-stop, and the sun is really, really bright mm -hmm. and everything's great and there's nothing else going on, you know, maybe about three, four days. Okay. Oh, um, okay. But it's not like that yes. because there's life going mm -hmm. on. and. Honestly, my mom duties kind of dominate, mm -hmm. yes. you know, so it does drag on. And now with the weather being the way it is, it drags on even more. I see. The weather is important because I understand that you only want to work on, you know, using natural light. I prefer that. I mean, mm. I prefer having 
um, really bright sunlight okay. mm -hmm. because it will show up anything that you need to sand or it shows up true colors. Mm -hmm. That that would be the ideal. Mm. But of course, you know, there are lamps. So Janice, how, how many dolls have you made to date and how many of them have been adopted? And also, I need to know that uh, which country actually you, your, your major customer base is located? You know, I haven't really done a recent count, mm. um, but I suppose it would be at 100 plus, okay. I guess. Right. Um, I mean, they are adopted from customers all over the world. Mm. It's, it's very spread out, so I, I don't think I could say it's particularly any one country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's in the Americas, Europe, mm. Australia, of course in Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out of all the dolls that you've made, which is the most memorable one? I would assume each doll has a story. They, they all have something sort of unique mm -hmm. and um, special about them. Yes, yeah, some customer stories are mm -hmm. a bit sadder. Mm -hmm. um, and those, you, you do tend to sort of remember them a bit mm -hmm. more. Um, those which commemorate something, yeah. Uh, yeah. some special time, you know, in their customers' lives. Okay, yeah. so, so your customers do share their stories with you sometimes? Yeah, a lot of times okay. they become friends, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. so any anyone that is very special that, you know, you remember very fondly? Oh, I'm actually fond of oh. all of them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very hard to, to sort of pinpoint Everyone anyone. Yeah, story. yeah, okay. you know, and, and the way Dolly world mm. is, mm -hmm. Eventually, everyone sort of knows each other okay. and you become friends. Mm. So what do your adopters appreciate the most about your dolls? Um, you know, something that a, a lot of people say about mm. my dolls is mm. that they have this um, old soul mm. vintage quality yeah. to mm. them. Yeah. Whenever someone adopts them, mm -hmm. I, that, that's what they're looking for. I I hear that you have a wait list to get a doll made and yeah. how long would that take like at, as of now? I would say months. Months? Yeah, at least. And it also, um, you know, because I'm doing the bears as mm. well and there's a, um, a kind of more pressing wait list there. Mm. Oh yes, Jenny, speaking about the bear, we know that this is another creation of yours. You call it the orphan bear. Tell oh, us about yeah. this orphan bear. Um, well, he's a bear mm -hmm. um, that uh, you can um, pose if yes, you okay. want. Yeah, so he's, so articula oh, yeah, he's yeah. articulated, mm -hmm. you know, and all that. He's essentially a figure that you can photograph and dress, okay. um, do things with. As you see this one, this okay, was this customized, one. yeah. Oh, you know, just recently I had this customer, she had Orphan Bear, mm -hmm. the base, um, and then she asked me to customize him. Mm -hmm. And so I did, and I, I just happened to post, post him okay. on my Instagram. And when people saw what I'd done with him, uh, yeah, and then so um, wants yeah, a, a after, uh, yeah, I wanted a okay. customized version of him. Is there any reason why you call it orphan bear? Well, he's a bear mm -hmm. first. He's an orphan. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he needs to be adopted. adopted. All right. Yes, okay. he, he needs a home, All you right. know. So do, do people? specify how they want to customize uh, actually right now it's following um, a sort of blind box format i see you know a blind box is where you, you just buy the, the box. box right and okay. you don't know what's inside yes, yes. or whatever so in this case it's something like that i i will just do him and you don't know what you're gonna get okay but you you just know you're just gonna love it anyway okay. yeah Mystery box. Janice, we understand that you know you mentioned earlier that before you started door making, you were actually a writer. Yeah. And you actually did continue to write, and you actually came up with a book. Yes. <laughs> and it's called the Lost Children of Gloom's End. Now, interestingly, this book is not written by you. It says that yeah. it's written by <laughs> Clementine Darling, which I believe she's sitting there. Yep, this is Clem. And, yes. <laughs> and 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 it's a story about Josie and her adventure. Yeah, that's and Josie right. Is so this is Josie. Over there. Now, can I say that <laughs> Clementine's Darling is your alter ego? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Okay. Yeah, she represents me a lot on my social media. Yes, we've realized yeah. that too. Mm. How so? Like, how, how would you like say she encapsulates your personality as a person and into this doll? 
I'm not quite sure. It, it's just that I use her a lot in my dioramas mm -hmm. and she's always got a bit of a dark side to her. Oh, okay. She's a bit gothy mm -hmm. and you know, she, she likes to read, mm -hmm. she, she, she likes rainy days. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of ended up identifying with her. Yes, yeah. in fact, I, I, I want to jump in now to, to say how good the book is. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to quote several glowing reviews of your book, all right? We have one reviewer by the name of Shafina Jaffa. And oh. what he wrote was that, The Lost Children of Gloom's End is a rich, atmospheric story that has been expertly crafted with can't put it down pacing and filled with all the right kind of haunting artifacts. And he went on to say that it's an absolute joy ride. The tale is intense and mesmeric and linguistically lyrical. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so and then another reviewer, all right, by the name of Mark King. This tale lingers on in the shadows of your mind long after you have read it. Just like the last vestiges of childhood, we are never able to fully shake off. Mm. Great, but the last review, I'm just going to quote <laughs> the very last one, <laughs> which I think all these reviews encapsulate what the book is about. But mm. the last review says, Someone make this story into a movie <laughs> now! Oh, by, a Athena, <laughs> by Athena O. Oh, no, I, I read a lot of reviews. I think a lot of them say that, you know, it's um, the imagination is so vivid and mm. so real. And uh, when I read the book, you know, in the mind, it's running all the all the scenery, and especially when you have all the old pictures and the dioramas created inside. You no, know, they can literally picture it as a movie. Mm. What do you think about that? I think that's great. Yes, I, we, we <laughs> yeah. think so too. Yeah, you know, I I think when I'm writing, I do visualize at the mm. same time. So I'm, I have all these visuals going on, mm. and so I I want to describe them, and yes. so if the reader can then visualize it too, then I guess, yes, because yay! <laughs> <laughs> We've come to the end of today's episode on the creator of Collectibles. We hope you enjoy watching it. If you liked today's episode, give us a like and subscribe to this channel. And if you know of any collectors or creator of Collectibles, feel free to contact us via this email or drop us a comment in the comment section below. That's right. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Ni wa wa, ni wa wa, yi ge ni wa wa, ye yo na mei mao, ye yo na yan jing, yan jing bu hui jia. Ni wa wa, ni wa wa, yi ge ni wa wa, 也有那鼻子，也有那嘴巴，嘴巴不说话。他是个假娃娃，不是个真娃娃。他没有亲爱的妈妈，也没有爸爸。你娃娃，你娃娃。一个泥娃娃，我做他妈妈，我做他爸爸，永远爱着他。